All right, welcome to uh, the fifth video notes in the Unbalanced Forces unit. Um, first of all, I just want to do a little bit of review, uh, just some of the tools, some of the things that we know so far. Um, balance forces, we know when forces are balanced, we have constant velocity. And uh, our, our constant velocity, if you remember way back when, if we talked about uh, position versus time, right, and we we got a nice straight line here so what was it again it was the position is equal to the velocity times the time plus your starting position and then we could have re rearranged that to uh, also look like this this means the same thing if we just rearrange that formula where this this delta x is the displacement right okay so um, in unbalanced forces what we get is uh, acceleration and so uh, we figured out that on a VT graph, that acceleration was the uh, the slope, was the, the rise over the run like this. And we also had a big five, which I won't write out now, but I think you probably should have handy somewhere. And those were those always work when we have constant acceleration. And I think in most of our questions, uh, the, the acceleration will be changing. It'll be a constant acceleration. We found friction uh, depends on only, really only two things: uh, on how rough how rough the surfaces are depends on roughness, or we gave that as uh, a name. We call that the coefficient of friction, and that's mu. And the other thing it depends on was the how those the surfaces were pushing on each other. So really, that was the the normal force. So the force of friction was equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, multiplied by the normal force. It always opposes uh, motion or attempted motion. The other thing about force of gravity, we found that the force of gravity was equal to uh, 10 newtons per kilogram multiplied by the mass and this this is true so th thus far we have not wandered from the surface of the earth this is true uh, at the surface of earth and um, you would likely suspect and you'd be right if we wandered farther from the surface of the earth so if here's the earth we're at the surface but we move a little bit farther away that number will actually get lower and lower and if we're at other planets it would change uh, we did a lot of work with components so if we have some force that's going off at a component we can or at a direction at an angle we can talk about uh, how far it goes in the x direction and the y direction so in this case we could actually replace say if this was a tension force we could replace this with a, a tension force in the x direction and a tension force in the y direction we could sort of move those arrows over there um, just as a quick shorthand, just to remind you, if you've got this off of the, if you draw the angle off of the x-axis, then this is going to be equal to the original, uh, let's say this was 40, this would be equal to 40 here, uh, multiplied by the cos of the angle. So we get x associated with cos, and our y would be whatever that vector was multiplied by the sine. Oops multiplied by the sine of the angle. So that's kind of neat because this is the adjacent side and that's the vertical side when you draw that angle that way. Uh, for inclined planes, we found that we needed to draw components again, but in this case, here, so for an object moving horizontally in my previous one, it would be accelerating uh, horizontally or the forces would be unbalanced in that horizontal motion on an inclined plane then now they're going to be unbalanced or any kind of acceleration would be parallel to the plane. So um, the, the odd person out, the odd force out was the force of gravity. So that's why we said, oh, okay, so for force of gravity, we want to change to the, uh, the perpendicular and the parallel. And the quick one here for FG parallel was equal to the force of gravity multiplied by the sine of theta. I don't know if it worked for you. I looked at the parallel symbol and I said it looks a little bit like a slide. Uh, FG perpendicular was multiplied by the cos of the theta, where that angle is this angle of the incline over here. All right, so let's start something new here. Now we're going to use our you know, Newton's second law. Newton's second law being A is equal to, uh, you know what, this needs a new color. Newton's second law is A is equal to F net over M, or another way of writing it is F net uh, is equal to ma and we're going to use that with uh, components here so let's take a look at our first one 
so this is the force diagram already drawn for us what we need to do is is take a look at that uh, uh, the applied force here and quite often forces if we don't really have a great name for it we just call it an applied force it's at 80 newtons at 30 degrees so uh, what we need to do is figure out okay so what is what is the x direction and what's the y direction here so if i just draw this bigger here so this side is 80 and here's my angle of 30 degrees and I can pay attention to the directions if if this force is going up and to the right then these two are going that way okay so if I'm looking at kind of my grid here so this will be uh, FAX and this will be FAY and like I said before FAX is going to be equal to uh, 80 times the cos of 30 degrees uh, you you got to be careful if you do that. It's got to be this angle. It can't it can't be that angle? All right. So you got to draw that angle off the x, and just look at it. And say, oh, is it the adjacent side? Yes. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 69.3 newtons. Uh, my FAY here is going to be equal to 80 multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees, which is a nice round 40. Okay. So what I like to do here then is redraw my force diagram and so now I've got here is FAX here is FAY and then everything else stays the same um, so one thing that you'll notice here FAY was 40 my normal force was 58 and my force of gravity here was 98 so if I'm looking at my vertical forces the vertical forces here and you notice that 58 40 and 98 they're balanced and it kind of makes sense because if this is a normal force likely what the situation is is that this is some object that's on a surface that's being dragged by an, a force at an angle so that makes sense that it does not accelerate vertically the 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 axis of which the forces are unbalanced is the horizontal axis because we have this fax here at 69.3 and we have the friction force at 40. So it's time for us to calculate. We can calculate two things out of this question. It doesn't ask us what to do, but we can say, hey, the first thing we can figure out is uh, what's F net. So if I'm looking along my horizontal axis, I'm going to say, I'm going to put F net subscript X just to say, I'm going to look at F, F net along the X axis here. And I'll say that this direction is positive to the right is positive. So FAX is positive minus force of friction is going the opposite direction. So it's negative minus the force of friction. So in other words, I'm going to get 69.3 minus 40. So I'll get, uh, what is that? 29.3 newtons. So if that was the first question, that would be the answer. What is the net force? What's the unbalanced force? The second part could be, what is the acceleration? So acceleration is F net over M. So I get 29.3 divided by the mass. Hmm, I wonder what the mass is. Okay, so we have a clue to tell us what the mass is. Here's the force of gravity at 98. So the force of gravity is equal to 10 multiplied by the mass. So 98 is equal to 10 times m. So you just have to divide by 10. So the mass is going to be 9.8. So looking back over here, I'll divide by 9.8. 29.3 divided by 9.8, I think is like 2.99 meters per second squared. Okay, so there's there's our answer for the first one. Hope that makes sense for you. I'd like you to try number two. It's very similar. Uh, the question again, find the acceleration of the object below. So it's the same step. I'd like you to try to find the net force first. So hit pause now and give that a try. All right, I didn't include every single step here, but I took my FA, uh, 100 newtons, and I resolved it into two components, the X and the Y, and I got, because it's 45 degrees, the cos of 45 and the sine of 45 is the same. So I got 70.7 in both of them. My F net, 
Uh, it's just the x-axis that I need to be concerned about because the y-axis is balanced. You'll notice that this value plus this value is the same as that value, so the vertical forces are balanced. Horizontal ones are unbalanced, so my f-net is based on those ones. So I get an f-net of 30.7, and so my acceleration is 30.7 divided by 24.5 equals one and a quarter meters per second squared. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. Kind of similar here. It says a student drags a seven kilogram carton of apples across the floor by exerting a 45 Newton force in the direction shown. The coefficient of friction between the cart, carton and the floor is 0 0.5, 0 0.52 what is the acceleration of the box. Okay, so the first thing I think that we uh, would like to do is draw the other forces in here. So uh, we have a, a force of gravity here, and the force of gravity, since the mass is 7, it's going to be 70 newtons. We're going to have a, a normal force upwards. Notice I drew it a little bit shorter. We won't know right away what it is. Um, the reason why it's not exactly 70 is because this force at an angle is going to, uh, well, let's just see, we're going to have an Fx here, and we're going to have an Fy here. Okay, so my Fx is going to be equal to 45 times the cos of 24 degrees, um, which is 41.1, and my Fy is going to be equal to 45 times the sine of 24 degrees, which is equal to 18.3. And so uh, my Fn here, when I'm looking at my vertical forces here, I'm going to say F net in the y direction should be equal to zero. They are going to be balanced because the only way this is going to be accelerating is the acceleration is going to be to the right. So what is um, what are all my forces along the vertical axis? Well, again, I'm going to remind myself which way is positive. I'm going to say up is positive, down is negative. So all the forces in the vertical direction will be Fn, which is positive, plus Fy, the, the vertical component of that force, minus my Fg. And this should be equal to zero. So I'm going to put in here uh, Fn plus 18.3 minus 70 equals zero. So Fn, I'm going to add 70 to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 18.3 for both sides. So my normal force in this case, uh, if I do my math, what's my math here? 51.7. Okay, so now I know what this one is, 51.7. Uh, and I need to figure out what my friction is. So my friction uh, if the, the person is dragging it in the direction as shown, so it's dragging it to the right, then I know that friction is going to be to the left. So friction is equal to mu times the normal force. We haven't used this formula very often. So mu, we're told, is 0 0.52. And the normal force, we just figured it out, is at 51.7. So 0 0.52 times 51.7. Yeah, what is my friction force then? 26.9. So I think we're ready here, if I'll put in 26.9. So I think we're ready to talk about our F net in the X direction, because it's balanced in the Y direction. It's equal, they all add up to zero, but in the X direction, they're not going to. So that means that's, what's, that's the direction we're going to accelerate. So we're going to have... Um, fx in the positive direction. Again, I'll, I'll sort of indicate I'm going to make to the right positive and to the left negative. I'm going to say fx is uh, in the positive direction minus the force of friction. So my answer will be 41.1 minus 26.9. So I will get, uh, what is it, 14.2 newtons. So that would be the first part. And now my acceleration is equal to f net divided by mass 14.2 divided by, well, what is the mass? Oh, it was 7, right? So I get very close to 2 meters per second squared. I guess it's slightly uh, slightly above that. All right, uh, you have a, your, your turn. So again, could you please hit pause and give this one a try? 
So to solve this question uh, very quickly, I found the x and the y components of that force that was at an angle, and I redrew over here, I redrew the uh, force diagram. Now the vertical ones, uh, I don't really have to solve for because I know they would add up to zero. Um, and because the question gave me the force of friction, I didn't actually have to calculate every single force. I just needed fx and the force of friction was given. So there's my f net and then finally there's my acceleration. Okay, let's take it the, this last one. Um, this reminds me a lot of the, the lab that we did in class with a cart and a hanging mass, although the, here the hanging mass is huge, it's 25 kilograms. So um, one thing that we can think about here is we can say uh, it gets a little wonky uh, about the direction. Okay, so let's say that the direction that it's, if it's starting from rest, this object is going to start moving and be uh, accelerating to the right. So I'm going to say that the direction that things are going to accelerate is going to be positive. And I can make things up the other way, but I'm, the, you know, the important thing is once you set a direction, you want it to be consistent. Now, the, what the pulley and the string does is it sort of changes directions. But this, uh, this tension force pulling on this right and the tension force of this up is actually a force pair that will cancel each other out. So one thing is when we're looking at this in a second, we're not even going to worry about tension forces when we're looking at the whole thing. Uh, and by whole thing, I mean the system. So the system is is this, if we put a box around it, the, the system would be this entire thing. But now if I say, okay, this 15 kilogram box is going to be accelerating to the right. So, so to the right is positive for that 15 kilogram mass. For the 25 kilogram mass, it's going to be accelerating downwards. So what I'm going to do is say that direction is positive. Okay, so now when I look at the forces, uh, it's interesting. So I'll have the, this force of gravity and this normal force here, and, and those two are going to be canceling each other out. Okay, we're going to have this tension force here, and we're going to have this tension force there, but those two cancel each other out. So really, overall, when we're looking at the entire system, the only force that is causing this entire thing to accelerate is this force of gravity here. Okay. Uh, another way to think of it is let's kind of redraw these things and pretend it looked like this. Okay. And that there was some force that were was pulling the two. So if this was the 15 kilogram and this was the 25, and then we sort of even looked at that and said, hey, it's one object. The thing that would be pulling this thing that would be dragging it would just be the force of gravity which in this case is 250 newtons, would be a force of 250 newtons. So thinking of it that way, let's say, and, and you can, the clue is when you see the word system, because we're going to define our system as the entire thing. So we're going to say the F net of the system is going to be equal to 250 newtons. It's that force of gravity of the larger one. The mass of the system is going to be equal to, well, the two added together, 15 plus 25, so that would be 40 kilograms. So if we want to find the acceleration, again, acceleration F net over M is 250 over 40. So when I divide those two out, I get 6.25 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, not today, but another day, we might take a look at this individually, and we might be able to solve what is the tension in that uh, system. Okay, so for the your turn, could you just switch the 15 and the 25 kilogram and, and figure out what the acceleration is? So again, hit the pause, give it a try, and I'll be back to show you. All right, I'll let you two uh, take a look at the particulars, but in this case, the F net is going to be the force of gravity from the, the smaller one because they switched, so it's going to be 150 over 40, and it would be 3.75 meters per second squared. Our very last example, and there's no more your turn, so you can just uh, relax a little bit and take some notes on this one. It says a 12-kilogram cart on a 23-degree angle, 23 degree frictionless incline is connected to a wall as shown. What is the tension of the cable? Okay, so if I look at this, uh, my initial free body diagram, my initial force diagram, so we're going to have a tension force in the same direction as the cable. We're going to have a force of gravity downwards, realizing that very soon we're going to change that to perpendicular and parallel. Uh, and then we have this normal force here. Okay, so let's change that um, to the perpendicular and the and parallel. So here is FG perpendicular 
here is FG parallel. So I'm going to replace the original one with these components. So maybe I'll just erase this one and I'll put FG parallel over here. So we kind of see them properly going away from the center. Okay, so first of all, these two are going to be uh, balanced. Now, to think about FG parallel and the tension force, are they balanced or not? Well, this cart is connected to the wall as shown. I think it's not moving. And so if it's not moving, that is an example of constant velocity. So if it's going at a constant velocity, that means F net, all the forces have to be balanced, have to add up to zero. In other words, this tension force, I should draw this one larger, is going to be the same, maybe even that large, as the FG parallel. So really, if I'm going to say that, uh, if the tension force is going to be the same thing, it's just the opposite direction as FG parallel, and much my question, find out the tension. Oh, tension, they just use a capital T. They mean the same thing as the force of tension. Um, how can I find FG parallel? Well, FG parallel is equal to FG multiplied by the sine of the angle. Uh, the force of gravity is 120 multiplied by the sine of 23 degrees. Getting my calculator out, I think I get 46.9 newtons. Okay, so a little bit of thought on that one. Um, so it wasn't accelerating, it was constant velocity. So we put the constant velocity model together with our uh, F net equals MA. All right, um, I hope that worked for you, and I'll see you in class.